Well, I promised in an earlier video that we would learn some more numerical measures that summarize a data set, because that's the title of the chapter. And now is the time. We're going to learn about measures of position. Position is where a score is in relation to the whole data set. We're actually also going to learn another measure of spread that we haven't run into yet, but that won't be for a while. All right, so first thing we want to do is look at the idea of a z-score. So don't, don't look ahead. Let's just read through these as they come. So suppose you get an exam back and you find you got a 70%. How do you feel about your score? All right, well, in general, most students are not happy with this score. Now, I always get a couple students, they're like, woohoo, I passed, which is true, they did pass, but you have the lowest possible passing score. So that's usually well, it's a little precarious, you know, you might not pass the class if you only get a 70% on the exam. So that's a little nerve wracking. It's a little sad. That's a little tear. Here, I'll, I'll give it some more tears, <laughs> right? All right, so then now suppose I further inform you that the mean, well, remember mean is the average, one of the averages, right? The center, the average, is 60%. Well, now how do you feel? feel a little better, right? Because you think you did better than about half the class, because if the mean is the center, you know, then at least you know you did better than half the class. Of course, if it's very skewed, this might not be the case, but um, I guess I could say about half the class. Let's say that. Then about It's not going to be perfect. Half the class. All right. Now suppose I further inform you that the standard deviation on this exam was 10. Hmm. Now what do you think about your score? And now we're going to give you a slight smile. Right? Now why? Well, let's think about this. You scored a 70. And the mean was 60, right? Which means there was a difference of 10. If you know that the standard deviation is 10, then you know you scored one standard deviation above the mean. So you did pretty well, right? So did pretty well. Instead of being about half the class, which would be about 50%, you now have reason to believe you might be better than about 60 to 70% of the students. Oops, I'm running out of space. <laughs> half of the class. Uh, I gotta fit class in here. Okay, more than, and I can tell you it's around 60 to 70. I mean, it depends on the 60% um, to 70% of the class. It, that's not important. I'm not going to, you know, test you on that or anything. It's just to give you a sense of what this means. So half is about 50. So you did better than about half, about 50. But now you know you're better than about 60 to 70%. Well, that's, that's pretty good. That's feeling great. And you just learned the z-score. This right here, this one right here, that's a z-score. And if you're thinking, what are the units for it? Well, this was points and this was points, so they canceled. It doesn't have a unit. It's unitless. Huh. And that's this for these formulas right down here. So the population z-score, the sample z-score. It doesn't really matter which one it is. It works the same way. It's just that if it's a population, you use the formula on the left. And if it's a sample, you use the formula on the right. But it doesn't change how the formula functions. It, it functions as it does every time, which is, you know, take the value, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. All right, so we'll use this one if data are a population, which doesn't happen too often, at least in this chapter. It will happen to us in chapter seven, believe it or not. And then use if the data are a sample, which is more likely at this point. 
All right, now we can also tell that this value is telling us how far above the mean we are, right? So we can see we're one standard deviation above the mean. We see it has no units. Z-scores in general have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. I'll talk about that in a second. And they're very important. <laughs> From chapter seven onward, they're a very big deal. We will run into them again in chapter seven and chapter nine and chapter 10 um, particularly. Generally, we round z-scores to two, decimal places, two to three decimal places. All right, now let's practice again. I did skip up here. So suppose I, I say, oh, I messed up. I messed up. The standard deviation was five. Well, now you feel really great. Woohoo! Give yourself a party hat. Throw yourself a party, right? Huzzah! I'll have confetti. Now, why? Well, let's find your z-score. So your z-score is x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Your score was 70. Take away 60 divided by 5, which is 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So your z-score is 2. Has no units, has no inches, no feet, no points, no nothing, right? All right, so you did very well. Better than most of the students. How much better? Well, again, we're not going to get into this too much. There's a there's a rule for this called Chebyshev's rule, but um, for your own benefits, you can understand. It's about about somewhere between 75 to 95 percent of the students, 97 percent, depending on the shape of the distribution, right? So if it's symmetric, it'll be more like 97 percent, right? So that just gives you a sense of what I mean when I say most. All right, lovely. Um, now, before we leave z-score behind, there's a couple other things to note down here. Matter of fact, one particular thing. What happens if you score the mean? So pretend. Um, let me give you an example over here. So if you had a value, if your test score was 60% and the average was 60%, then your z-score would be 60 take away 60 over 10, which is 0 divided by 10, which is 0 which leads us to know that, oh, okay, a z-score can be positive if you score above the mean, right? Positive. If you score at the mean, your z-score is zero, right? So zero, right? So this equals the mean, right? So if, you're, if your score is equal to the mean, then your z-score will be zero. That's what we just learned. Now, what if you scored below the mean? Uh, let me change to a different color real quick, just to give you an example. So if your test score was 50%, then your z-score would be 50 take away 60 divided by 10, which is negative 10 over 10, which is negative one. So you can have negative z-scores if you're below, which is what this is getting at. Z-scores tell us whether a particular value is equal to the mean. If it's equal, then your z-score is zero. Below the mean, if you have a negative z-score, right, that'll be this one, and above the mean would have a positive z-score, which is what we saw up here. Positive z-scores above, negative z-scores below. A zero value means that you scored the mean. That's why z-scores have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. That's the way it would work out. And again, before I shut this video down, this will be very important to know later on. Oh, one more thing before we head out. Let's look at how to do this in Desmos, just to be careful. So when I'm in Desmos, if I want to do the one I just did, 50 take away 60, you have to use parentheses to get this to work right like that. If you try to type 50 take away 60 over 10, that's wrong. 
right? That is completely the wrong answer. You have to put parentheses. Or if you hit the division first, then you can type it in and it'll be fine. So what you might want to do is add that into the notes for yourself, especially if, if that's a struggle for you. So in the formula itself, I don't bother writing it because mathematically it's not necessary, but this division bar here is a parentheses symbol. Math teachers just don't write it because we're lazy. So if you want to put parentheses around all these values to make sure that you do it correctly, that would be a wise move. Right, put it out right on the formula sheet that it's got parentheses around it. And up here, do this for yourself, right? Add in those parentheses so that way you don't make that mistake and accidentally type it incorrectly into Dosmos or into a calculator.